Hey guys, we're just being selected for the University Challenge. The last I shot! Music, please! Now, why did I just say that young one's uh, reference? Well, today we're going to go visit Phil, filthy animal Taylor's grave um, south of Sheffield. Yes, yeah, so that's right, the drummer from Motorhead, who was in the classic lineup that featured like Lemmy, Fastity Clark, himself, that was. Like, he was a motorhead from, like, 76 until 84, then he left for a couple of years and he came back and he was in the band for a few more years. Especially how he was on the famous 1916 album. Now at Victoria Station, this is a short walk to the bus station as usual. So, half an hour to get my bus to Sheffield. I'm only paying about £12 return to Sheffield. And only four pounds return to Chesterfield from Sheffield on the trains. So, travel has to be cheap because there's no way I'm going to spend a lot of money on trains in this country. I've been in the UK for five years. I hardly ever took trains to Birmingham. You know? It's two minutes eight o'clock and the bus is ready to leave. I should be at Sheffield just after 11. But hopefully, I don't sleep in on the bus, otherwise I'll be in Newcastle. Don't want that to happen. Travelling on the motorway in England, just left London. We are the road crew. I just got to Sheffield uh, station. Not the actual bus station, but the Meadowbank station where you can either get a train or a tram. So, I feel like I'm just getting a tram right now. Don't know where I have to buy tickets, but... Just making my way into Sheffield now to get on the train to Chesterfield. It's only about four pounds return when you book in advance. Trains from Meadowbank bus station to Sheffield are 350 return. Sheffield on the train that's going to Nottingham. Two stops to Chesterfield. In design, need Wi-Fi right now to get the bus that goes to where Phil Taylor is buried. In Chesterfield, this is the famous Chesterfield Anglican Church with a really curved uh, spear in a spiral. You know, my good mate Nigel uh, told me I should come and check it out. So this is what I'm doing while I'm trying to find a cash point that's in charge two pounds withdrawal fees. I've paid four pounds for a day ticket to get me from Chesterfield, where I am right now, all the way to where am I going? Haslands. So we get to Haslands Cemetery. Should get there. In, in a roughly 15 minutes, day ticket's four pounds. So it just works better because I mean, single would have been like three pounds. Save some money. Now, I first heard of Motorhead uh, November 2006. Yeah, that's correct. Like, uh, I was starting up being a metalhead 12 months prior after buying the Metallica Black Album. So I bought that Black Album. And then I discovered a lot of interesting thrash bands, like Big Four, Metallica, Slayer, Anthrax, Megadeth. And then in New Zealand that year, I discovered Iron Maiden in April. When I was in New Zealand for a week, I discovered Iron Maiden, Ember the Beast. And in that same period, I discovered other British metal bands, like Judas Priest, and then Motorhead. Now, I never bought any Motorhead albums in my early Metalhead days and stuff. Motorhead came to Australia in October 20, 2007 and March 2011. Both times just couldn't make it, not working hard, being poor and all. The thing was Motorhead influenced all the thrash bands that came out of Britain and America and around the world in the 1980s. So without Motorhead you probably wouldn't have thrash metal. 
I mean, everyone knew Murder has a spit my old band, but according to the Lemmy, he'd be like, We're Murderhead, we play rock and roll. Something like that. I've walked into town to pick up money, and I'm just going past the train station just came from. So, it is all for nothing, I guess. But, but then, at least I'm gonna get to the cemetery on time, and then I'll be able to get back to Chesterfield before my train leaves. And then I'll be able to get my bus back to London before it leaves at 8. So, I need to find some time to cram in a Wetherspoons burger, a Jack Daniels burger to be precise. So if you're coming from Chesterfield, get the number 54 bus. It leaves every 10 minutes or so, and it drops you off at this stop, St. Paul's Church in Hasland. So the cemetery is a crossroad over there, that's the back entrance. But we're going to go to the main entrance over here. A bit of history on Motorhead. Lemmy was a great guy. I've read reports that he was actually Jimi Hendrix's roadie in the 60s and 70s on a British tour. But then we first came to know Lemmy and Hawkwind in all those albums in the 60s and 70s. And then he was busted with speed on the US-Canada border in Canada. And then he was fired from Hawkwind after that. So then he started his band Motorhead. Now the famous lineup of Lemmy, Fast Eddie Clark, and Phil Filthy Animal Taylor, that stuck around from 1976 to 1982. And they record all the classic albums like Overkill, Bomber, uh, Ace of Spades, No Sleep to Hammersmith and all. And then, uh, so after Eddie, the Fast Eddie left in like 82, Phil stayed on with the band until 1984, then he left. And then he rejoined in like 1987. He just said it was a bit of a vacation for him. And I remember he was on the famous 1916 album. And so Phil left the band shortly a bit after, a few years later. And he just kept on drumming, doing other things, until he passed away in November 2015. And then, only like a month and a bit later, Lemmy was gone. And I've read reports online that his wife was left nothing in his will, nothing in his estate. So, it's quite shocking and all that his wife got nothing, even though he was, uh, you know, a millionaire with all the records Motorhead sold back in the day. But you, you gotta remember, like, in America and stuff with Motorhead, Motorhead were never really that big compared with being in the UK. I mean, yes, Lemmy lived in Los Angeles, and yes, Motorhead toured America, but they never got a platinum album they deserved. They got platinum albums in here, they made appearances on uh, Young Ones, and Lemmy was in a Kit Kat commercial, and Lemmy was in Airheads. But I mean, bands differ on different sides of the Atlantic. Think about it. So here we are, Hassan Cemetery. Um, winter times differ, but summer time stays open a bit longer. Um, Find a Grave hasn't told me the exact location, but uh, this is a map and stuff, so number F. There's a groundskeeper over there, so he might help me. So here we are, at the grave of Phil John Taylor, known as Filthy Animal. Born 21st September 1954, passed away 12th of November 2015. Only a few weeks before Lemmy died. Much loved son, rather an uncle, legendary drummer, with a unique sense of humor, missed by many. I'm a little teddy bear, but I don't swear. I don't swear. Yeah. It tickles me when I read that. Yeah, yeah, like one of my friends on Facebook was commenting like on my post, I'm gonna visit his grave, and he says, I'm a little teddy bear and I don't swear. Right, is that and, what he said? Yeah, uh, and I was like, <laughs> uh, wait, is this a motorhead like lyric and stuff? Yeah. I mean, uh, I'm not really much of a motorhead fan myself. I mean, I used to listen yeah. to some motorhead albums yeah. when I was young. But it's just all, motorhead influenced all of my favorite thrash metal bands. Right. Like, it even let me play with Metallica a few times. Yeah. So, if you want to visit Phil's grave, right, come out through the main entrance there, across from the church, go across this path right here, and go downwards past this big tree. And then there's another big tree right here. And the Taylor plot is just right here. There it is. So that's Phil's parents, Margaret and John, and uh, the great drummer himself, Phil.
John Taylor, filthy animal. So I quite feel honored and happy that Phil is buried in his hometown, like with his parents and all. I mean, unlike Lemmy, Lemmy's buried in Los Angeles, where he lived for like many years. But he's not buried with any other family in like that big cemetery at Forest Lawn, Hollywood Hills. But he's buried right next to Ronnie James Dio. You kind of think, all right, sometimes when you're born in a country and you spend half your life there, and even if you immigrate to another country, you kind of should be buried in your birthplace, I guess. Or like your country of birth. But uh, if you spent half your life in another country and you've lived there and you've earned good money and you've worked hard and people know you, yeah, it seems good that Lemmy should be buried in Hollywood Hills Forest Lawn. I mean, I don't know where Fast Eddie Clark's been buried. I mean, I guess his parents and partners live his ashes and stuff. But there's another, another, other two people of Motorhead who've also passed away, like Wuzil, and I don't know where he's buried and all. But, um,. Yeah, maybe I'll find him someday, I guess. Now while I'm at it, I might as well go visit some Commonwealth War Graves, because that's my new thing I like. Uh, this man here is from the Gren Gren Grenadier Guards, only 18. Uh, died after World War II. Uh, and, and this one here, Royal Artillery, it's a very familiar grave. And the usual uh, Royal Air Force of a pilot who Died in 1962. I don't know what he died of or what war. Maybe it could have been overseas and stuff. But I'll have to like uh, look him up. Now that I've visited Phil Taylor from Motorhead's grave, I'm starting to realise I'm running a bit low on Rockstar's graves in the UK. Like uh, I've still got Brian Jones to visit. I still got those two guys from Pretenders. I've got Ian Curtis, south of Manchester, visit someday soon. Um, mm, yeah. I mean, there are some other rock stars I could visit, but I'm... Like, I mean, there's a guy from Dead or Alive, he's buried in Kensal Green, but I'm not a big fan, like, of dance music and that type of stuff. I don't, don't like it, I just hate it. So, so uh... But I guess I will be heading abroad sometime soon to go visit other rock stars' graves, and like in Europe, or um, or even in Australia. I mean, I should get back to Australia someday. You go to Perth, there's never been, and visit Bon Scott's grave. He's already been in his birthplace. So I'm on the border right now of Chesterfield and Hasland. So back there, where we've just been to visit Phil, filthy animal, Taylor of Murderhead's grave. That's in Hasland. But over here, border of uh, Chesterfield. And, you know, I never in my entire life would I ever think of going to Chesterfield. I asked a friend of mine yesterday, I said, oh, I'm gonna go to Sheffield, and then I'm gonna go to Chesterfield so I can visit Phil Taylor's grave. And he says, oh, check out that spiral in that Anglican church, Martin, it's amazing. 